So you have seen many tutorial on NRM1, but they all just talk about the basics. Then this video is for you because in this video, we'll talk about a lot more than the basic. And this will be a series where we'll talk about NRM1, NRM2, NRM3, and we'll start from NRM1. So what are we going to talk about in this video? In this video, we are going to talk about what is the suite of NRM, when it was published, why it was revised, what is the main use of NRM, what is the link between ICMS and NRM, what is ICMS, what is IPMS, what is role of QS as per Reba plan of work and NRM1, what is the information that is required to make cost estimate as per NRM1 and finally the measurement rule for facilitation work. If this sound interesting then follow along in the video. Hello everyone welcome back to the channel my name is Naresh Punya and in today's video we are going to talk about all of that. So let's start. So what is NRM1? NRM1 is order for cost estimating and cost planning for capital building. So what is NRM? NRM is a new rule of measurement. It's a method of measurement. There are many methods of measurement like standard method of measurement is there though it is not used anymore. It is being replaced by NRM2. Then principle of measurement international is there which is called POMI. Then SISM is there, then NRM1 is there, NRM3 is there, so ICMS is there, IPMS is there. These are all method of measurement. So how we are going to run this video? We'll talk about many concepts and some of these concepts I've already talked about in separate videos. So there is no point of just increasing the length of this video. I'll give you the link of those video and then you can check those videos out. So first thing is you should watch a video about method of measurement. So you will know the hierarchy that how the method of measurement started, which was the first method of measurement and how it got transitioned to another method of measurement like SMM7 went on to become NRM2. Where do we use SISM? Where do we use POMI? All these things you should know and this you can find in this video that I've linked above. It's about method of measurement. So you first need to understand the method of measurement. And and one of that method of measurement is NRM1. Before talking about NRM1, we should talk about NRM suite of documents. What is NRM suite of document? NRM suite of document has three documents, NRM1, NRM2, NRM3. Today, we are specifically talking about NRM1. So this method of measurement is specifically for buildings. So what is the latest NRM1? The latest NRM1 came out in October 2021. Why it got revised? Because ICMS was introduced, IPMS was introduced, REBA plan of work was introduced and cost prediction was introduced and REBA plan of digital work was also introduced. Out of these, I've already made videos about ICMS, IPMS and REBA plan of work. These video I've linked here, you can go and check that out. But let's talk about that briefly. So ICMS is International Cost Management Standard. What this standard does is if you are a stakeholder who has properties in different areas and you have projects going on. So if you want to review these properties and if you are a big hedge fund or if you are a big firm which has multiple projects going on in multiple countries, then this standard helps you to divide the cost in appropriate section so that you can have a like to like comparison. So this is the use briefly, the use of ICMS. What is IPMS? IPMS is International Property Measurement Standard. What this standard does is, this standard standardize that how you measure the internal area of the building, external area of the building, usable area of building and so on and so forth. They have termed it as IPMS1, IPMS2, IPMS3, so on and so forth. And this is the same as gross internal floor area and gross external floor area. So they have standardized. Now every property that is measured should ideally be measured using this standard. So this is IPMS. What is REBA plan of work? REBA plan of work is basically the stages in which the construction is done right from the phase when you have the basic detail of the projects to the concept design to the detail design to the construction handover and so on and so forth. There's a detailed stages that are there and there is detailed information of how a quantity surveyor is supposed to work in these stages. Now because of all these things and Reba digital plan of work. I don't have a video yet for this. I'll probably publish a video later on. I'll link it in the description. But because of all these standards that got out, NRM1 was 
revise in October 21. Now let's talk about the introduction of NRM. So what does NRM do? NRM provides a basic for majoring building work and what approach you should be taking for dealing with other associate works that are along with the project. It is used for preparing cost estimates and elemental cost plan. It is used for breaking down your projects in WBS and CBS, which is work breakdown structure and cost breakdown structure. This WBS and CBS, what it does, it starts the projects, initial elemental components, and then from there, subcomponents are broken down and this makes it easier for doing the reconciliation of the project that how much cost we incurred in this component how much cost we incurred in this subcomponent now if you want to link icms with nrm1 you have to do it at level 4 now let's talk about what information you require to make your cost estimate using nrm1 there are some information that you need from architect and there are some information that you need from MEP engineer, mechanical, electrical and plumbing engineer. So let's talk about the employer first. So from the employer, you should know the uh, location of the site, the story height of the site, the use of the building, that what would be the use of the building? What is the floor area? Or if it's a hospital, then what is the bed capacity? Is there any requirement for refurbishment? What are the requirement of quality? What are the requirement of sustainability? What are the requirement of fit out? If possible, the rough program with milestone date. If there is any restraint from the client, detailed site information like if the ground is contaminated, any building to be demolished, what is the target lifespan of the structure, 10 year, 20 year, if there is any cash flow constraint. Now these are the major requirements that you need from the employer. From architect, you can have information like floor plan, floor area, gross internal floor area, gross external floor area, car parks, where the car parks would be, whether they'll be in basement, whether they'll be above, whether they'll be above ground. And from the mechanical and electrical engineer, you will need that what kind of services will be there. And if there is a structural engineer, you can ask them things like what is going to be the bearing capacity of soil, whether we need to do pile foundation or raft foundation or something like that. Now, this is the information that you need, but obviously you will not have all the information. Whatever information you have, you have to work according to that information. But the more precise information you have, the more accurate your cost estimate would be. Now, let's talk about the last part, which is called the facilitation work. So what is facilitation work? Facilitation work is any work that need to be done before commencing the main project. Like you have to clear the site, you have to remove some buildings, you have to demolish something, you have to make the ground level. These things are the facilitation works. Now don't confuse between facilitation work and enabling work. Though it may sound similar, but enabling work can consist facilitation work, temporary work, as well as permanent new works also. Now, how will you measure the facilitation work? Facilitation work can be measured at area. They can be measured at cubic meter. They can be measured at linear meter. They can be measured at time. They can be measured at number. They can be measured at item. If you are measuring the facilitation work as the area, then it should be the entire area inside the boundary less the existing building that is already there that you don't need to demolish. So this was a little something about the NRM1. I hope you like it. If you did, give it a thumbs up and please subscribe to the channel because going forward, we'll talk about NRM1 more, NRM2 and NRM3. So I hope you like the video. If you did, give it a thumbs up and please subscribe to the channel. I'll see you in the next video.